Hello everyone, today we are going to look at the last chapter of the book Who is Jesus? I will read a small introduction and then go straight to the lesson. We have seen in this study that Jesus' pre-existence, birth, life, teachings, miracles, death, resurrection, ascension and second coming are all unique. We also found that Jesus had power over every kind of disease, demons, nature and finally over death. We saw that he could create things out of nothing. He also had power to forgive sins. No mortal human can do any of these. The big question is, now that I know these truths, how will I respond to this person? How will I personally apply all this to my life? Let's answer this question as we conclude. We are going to read John chapter 3 verse 16 to 18 and verses 35 to 36 and mark all references to God the Father with a triangle. And we will also mark Jesus including the only begotten and only begotten son and son and all pronounced with a cross. So I am going to read John chapter 3 verse 16 to 18 and verses 35 to 36. For God so loved the world, so we mark God there with a triangle because that refers to God the Father, that he gave his only begotten son, so we mark son there, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hands. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life but the wrath of God abides on him. So let's get straight to the questions. What do you learn about God the Father? So the easy way of identifying is the triangle. Look at the triangle and see what do we learn about God the Father. So in verse 16 it says, God the Father loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. So that's what we learn about God the Father. Let's get to the next triangle. Verse 17. It says, For God the Father did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. So who is this Him? Is Jesus. But we see that God the Father did not send the Son into the world to judge the world. Let's look at the last triangle, in with the one more triangle we have marked in verse 18. It says, He who believes in Him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So we also learn here about the Son of God. So we'll get to the next question for that, uh, for looking at that particular aspect. Uh, verse 35, the Father loves the Son. So we here, we see that the Father in verse 35 loves the Son. So we're going to focus only on the Father right now. It says the Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hands. So, so what we learn here is that the Father loves the Son and has given all things into the Son's hands. Verse 36, he who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So what do we learn about God the Father here? That if you do not believe in the Son of God, the wrath of God the Father would abide on him. So let's get to the next question. What do you learn about God's only begotten Son? Remember we marked the only begotten Son, all references to Jesus with a cross. So let's look at what we learn about him, about the Son. Verse 16 says, whoever believes in him, so who is this him? It's the son. So whoever believes in the son, or in other words, whoever believes in Jesus, shall not perish, but have eternal life. So what's the advantage of believing in Jesus? Is if you believe in Jesus, you have eternal life. Let's get to verse 17. It says, the son did not come to judge the world. Here it says, God did not send the son into the world to judge the world. So the son did not come to judge the world. Verse 18, let's look at verse 18. He who believes in the Son or in Jesus is not judged. So what happens to a person who believes in Jesus is not judged or will not come under judgment. He who does not believe has been judged already. So by not believing in Jesus, the judgment is already passed. You have already come into judgment. Why? The next verse says because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So if you do not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God, you will not have eternal life or it says you have been judged, judged already. Let's look at verse 35. The father loves the son. 
So the son here is loved by the father and has been given all things into his hand. And the father has given him all things into his hands today. So, it, so today, where does all things belong? It belongs to the son. Let's look at verse 36. It says, he who believes in the son, what's the advantage? Has eternal life. So if you believe in the son of God, you have eternal life. He who does not believe, who does not obey the son will not see life. So if you do not obey the son, you will not see life. What else happens to the person who does not believe? or does not obey, the wrath of God abides on him. So let's let, get to the next question. What is prom promised to those who believe in the Son of God? So let's look at what is promised to those who believed in the Son of God. So let's look at the word believe. believe. It's in verse 18. It says, he who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. So what we learn here is if we believe in the son of God, we have no judgment. But if we do not believe, we have already been judged because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. In other words, if we do not believe in the name of the only begotten son, we are already under judgment. Verse 36, let's look at verse 36 because the word believe is mentioned there. He who believes in the son has eternal life. So what do we learn about belief? He who believes in the son has eternal life. So if we need eternal life, what do we need to do? Believe in the son. And he who does not obey the son of God will not see life. Let's get to the next question. Observe the usage of the word judge and judged in verses 17 and 18. What do you learn from these verses? So look, let's look at verses 17 and 18 and see what do we learn from these verses. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world. So what do we learn about judgment? God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world. But why did he send the Son? But the world might be saved through him. So that's what we learn about judgment. Let's look at verse 18 and see if there's anything mentioned there about judgment. It says, he who believes, he who believes is not judged. He who believes in him, that is in Jesus or the Son of God is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already. So it says, if you do not believe in the son, you have been judged already or judgment is already done. Because, why? Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So not believing in the name of the only begotten son of God gets you or puts you into judgment already. From these verses, what must you do to be saved? So what do we see? What must we do to be saved? It's very simple and clear. Believe. Verse 36 says, He who believes in the Son has eternal life. So what do we need to do? We need to believe in the Son of God so that we may have life, eternal life. Or it says that the wrath of God would abide on him. Let's get to the next section. Let us read. Let us read the following scripture portions. Jesus is hanging on the cross between two criminals. Read Luke chapter 23 verse 39 to 43 and mark every reference to Jesus including Christ and all pronouns that refer to him with the cross. Underline every reference to the criminals or criminal or criminals in plural including pronouns. So we are going to look at Luke chapter 23 verse 39 to 43. This is a very interesting conversation that is happening with between three people and we will get to see what the conversation is all about. One of the criminals who were hanged there were hurling abuse at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. So we mark their criminal and him here refers to Jesus. So we have marked him and also marked, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. So look at the markings there at the, of the cross. Let's get to the next verse, verse 40. But the other answered, rebuking him and said, Do you not even fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed are suffering justly for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And he said to him, so it's Jesus said to the criminal, the second criminal, truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. So let's get straight to the questions and try to extract as much as possible from this conversation. 
What do you learn about Jesus from these verses? So let's look at what we learn about Jesus from these verses. Verses 29. So here we see one of the criminals who were hanged there were hurling abuse at Jesus saying, so they were hurling abuse at the guy, the person was abu hurling abuse at Jesus saying, are you not the Christ? So in other words, if you are Christ, save yourself, but also save us. So uh, that was another, uh, what, what we learned from that verse. Let's look at verse 40, uh, verse 41, because there's a cross there. We in, so this is a conversation happening with the two people, two criminals. He says, we indeed are suffering justly for what we are receiving, what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. So they re, the, 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 the second criminal recognized that this man, which is Jesus, had done nothing wrong. Let's get to verse 42. He was saying, so the second criminal is saying, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. So what do we learn about Jesus? We, we, we learn that Jesus can remember us when, we, when he comes in his kingdom. He has a kingdom and he is shortly going to come in his kingdom. And he can, if we request him, we, he can remember us. Let's look at verse 43. And he said to him, now this is Jesus telling the second criminal, truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. So what do we learn about Jesus? Jesus has the authority to take a person to paradise. Here in this case, it was a criminal uh, who said he was being justly rewarded or justly, uh, 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 he, his punishment was just, but he, Jesus had the authority to take even a criminal to paradise. What, were the attitude of the two criminals towards Jesus different? So let's look at the attitude of the two criminals in verse 39 and we'll look at verse 40. So let's look at both the attitudes of the criminals. So one criminal, look at the first criminal, one of the criminals, so this let's, let's name it the first criminal, uh, hang, was hanged there, was hurling abuse. So what was he doing towards Jesus? What was his attitude? He was hurling abuse. He was, he was abusing Jesus. And what was he, what was he saying? Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. So that was the, that was the abuse. Let's look at the second criminal and see if there was a difference in the attitude. And the other answered. So this is the second criminal. He rebuked the first crim criminal. It's very interesting, isn't it? He rebuked from the cross. Imagine they were on the cross. Three of them were on the cross in pain, the painful agony that they were going through at that time. But the second criminal corrects or rebukes the first criminal and says, do you not fear God? So, so he is in other words saying that we need to fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation, since both of us are under the same sentence of condemnation and we indeed, so he is acknowledging there and saying we indeed are suffering, ju suffering justly. So he is he's, he's, uh, not justifying himself, he is acknowledging that he is a sinner and he is saying that he is suffering, he is suffering, both of them in fact were suffering justly. But for what we, for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. So he recognized the fact that the punishment was well deserving for both of these people. Because he says for we are receiving what we deserve for our deeds. So what we deserve we are receiving. For what? For our deeds. So he acknowledged the fact that his deeds were wrong or his deeds were sinful. But what does he say about Jesus? He says but this man, he looks at Jesus and this man has done nothing wrong. He acknowledged he, he, he realized and recognized that Jesus was sinless and the punishment that he was going through was not just. So he says, this man has done nothing wrong. Now let's look at verse 42 because he goes ahead and further uh, says something about Jesus which changes his very destiny. It says in verse 42, he looks at Jesus and says, Jesus, remember me when you come in your kingdom. He recognizes the fact that Jesus has a kingdom and has the authority power and authority to remember a sinner, a criminal like him when he comes in his kingdom. Now he is talking about a later event, but look at verse 43. The reply of Jesus to this criminal is, so Jesus is saying, I don't need to wait for a, a long time for the kingdom to come, but he's saying that truly I say to you, which means in other words, he says, I am telling you without a point of doubt that today uh, it's, it's an it's fascinating to see what Jesus is. Today, you shall, you shall be with me. So Jesus acknowledged that he is going to paradise and he also has the authority to take people with him to paradise. Today, you shall be with me, along with me in paradise. Amen.
So we saw the, we, we in fact saw the answer to this question. How did Jesus respond to the criminal who made the request? Today you shall be with me in paradise. Do you want to be with Jesus for eternity? This is an application question. Remember, inductive study involves three things, observation, interpretation, application. This is an application question which you need to ask yourself. Do you want to be with Jesus for eternity? Do you want to make that prayer, Lord, as the criminal said, remember me when you come in your kingdom. Do you want to make that prayer in your life? Do you want to be with Jesus for eternity? Let's read the last section of the book. Jesus said these words before he ascended to heaven. They include what is called the Great Commission. Let's read Matthew chapter 28 verse 16 to 20 and mark every reference to Jesus and Son including pronounced with a cross. So I'm reading Matthew chapter 28 verse 16 to 20. But the eleven disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountains which Jesus has designated. When they saw him, they worshipped him but some were doubtful. So we're going to mark Jesus and the Son here with a cross and all pronouns here. So, but some were doubtful and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you and lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. So let's look at the markings of the cross and see what we learn about Jesus. So what is Jesus saying here? But the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee, Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had designated. So Jesus had designated a mountain, where, a mountain where he is going to meet with his disciples. And it says in verse 17, when they saw Jesus, they worshipped him. So Jesus accepted their worship or in other words, the disciples worshipped Jesus and Jesus accepted their worship. Uh, but some were doubtful. Now, interestingly, Jesus had to, who else can be worshipped in all of, all of the world? Only the creator. So Jesus, being the creator God here, accepts the, worships of the worship of the disciples. Then it says, verse 18, Jesus came up and spoke to them. And something very interesting he said, uh, uh, it says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Now, remember, this was after his crucifixion and his resurrection and he is going to ascend very shortly. He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. What are we supposed to do? What are the disciples supposed to do? Because all authority has been given to Jesus. Go therefore and make disciples. So what were they supposed to do? Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Not only that, he also said, teaching them or teach them to obey, observe all that I commanded you to teach them to observe whatever commandments that Jesus gave or whatever Jesus taught, we have to obey or people have to obey. And there was a, a parting promise in which he said, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What did the disciples do when they saw him? We saw the answer. They worshipped him and he readily accepted the worship. What did Jesus say about his authority? We also saw that he said all authority. It was not a little bit of authority. It was not authority on a, a certain, certain, certain part of, of, uh, of the land or of the earth. But he says that all authority has been given to me where? In heaven. Now imagine the, the, the galaxies that God created, the sun and the moon and the stars and, and whatever we see around us, including the planet earth. He says, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So then go, there, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. What did he command his disciples to go and do? So what? let's look at what he commanded the disciples to go and do. Go therefore make disciples. So go was a commandment, make disciples of all nations. Not only that, he also said, teach them because that's only part of the sentence, but the full sentence is teaching them to observe. So, so the very fact of making, making disciples also included being taught to observe all things that Jesus has commanded us. What was his final promise? Was there a final promise that Jesus said? Let's look at the last part of verse 20. It says, and lo, I am with you always. So Jesus being the eternal God and the Alpha and the Omega, he says, I am with you always. We learned in, in the previous chapters how Jesus claimed to be the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. 
not only now but even to the end of the age i am with you always who can claim a, who can make this claim apart from god himself let's summarize we saw that jesus has power over eternal destiny he changed the eternal destiny of a criminal on the cross he said that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me or given to him he told a criminal that he would be with him in paradise jesus could take people to paradise have you trusted in him as your lord and savior let me repeat this jesus could and can take people to paradise have you trusted him have you trusted jesus as your lord and savior the bible says the bible makes a very astounding statement here we in this in this whole book we read about various things we read that jesus is unique in his birth and preexistence we saw that he is unique in his sinless life we saw that he is unique in his teachings we saw that he is unique in his miracles even in his miracles we saw he had power over sickness we saw he had power over nature we saw he had power over demons we saw he had power to forgive sins we saw he had power to create things out of nothing we also saw that he has power to raise the dead and give life to dead bodies to dead people but having seen that having looked at all that the bible makes a very astounding statement it says there is salvation in no one else there is salvation in no one else for there is no other name we so we know so many names around us but it says there is no other name under heaven that has been given now imagine this under heaven we, where is the earth we are under the heaven it says there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved in acts chapter 4 verse 12 it also says that if we confess now what do we need to do if we confess with our mouth what jesus as lord or in other words jesus is lord and we believe in our heart that god raised him from the dead who is this him jesus so confess with your mouth that jesus is lord believe in your heart that god raised jesus from the dead what will happen what's the effect of it you will be saved romans chapter 10 verse now save from what save from the coming wrath of god save from being the the bible says wages of sin is death save from the wages that we will shortly receive for our sins which is eternal death we saw in the last chapter which is chapter 7 his second coming about the lake of fire and the second death save from the lake of fire and the second death if you have believed in your heart then confess these truths before god the father before the father in prayer father god so let's bow our heads here and say this prayer within ourselves and god is your witness you are in front of god and you are acknowledging these things in the presence of god and we will pray make this prayer father god i acknowledge that i am a sinner I have no merit in myself. I believe you sent Jesus your son to die for my sins. I believe he led a sinless life. He suffered and died for my sins. I believe he rose again from the dead and ascended to you. I accept the gift of forgiveness of sins and eternal life you offer to those who believe in him. I accept him as the lord of my life i believe he is coming back to take me to be with him amen jesus said in my father's house are many dwelling places if it were not so i would have told you for i go to prepare a place for you if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again now remember jesus said i am going to come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may also be john chapter 14 verse 20 john chapter 14 verse 2 to 3 i hope that the reading and the studying of this book and the topics that we have discussed has blessed your life and i hope that you have accepted jesus as your lord and savior may god bless you thank you so much get in touch call us on plus 9186550 3302 or email us at info@preceptindia.org you can also find us on www.preceptindia.org god bless you